Welcome to our online viewers this morning. So glad to have you online. And we pray that God is going to bless you in a very special way. Can we turn our Bibles this morning to the book of Mark chapter 16? Mark chapter 16 and verses number 15. Verse number 15. Dear beloved, it's very trying time in the world that we are living in this morning, and uh, many are going to be left behind. And we find that we only know God on a birthday, a celebration. Uh, on a funeral and a wedding, we know God that we need His blessings at that particular time. But it's not so. We should not only need God on special occasions, we should need God every day of our lives. And uh, saying that this morning, it's when you don't have anything. That's the time you need God. And when you have everything, that's the time you also need God. So, many go to church and uh, call themselves Christians, but also many are going to be left behind. The Bible says, if my people that are over my name and humble themselves, turn away from the wickedness and seek my face, I God will heal the land. But the only person that will make it to heaven is from the book of Matthew 28 19. And disciples will make their way into heaven only if they discipline according to the word of God. And that is the reason this morning. We all say that we are Christians, but how many of us are really saved? And how many of us are really believers this morning? And how many of us are really disciples this morning? Amen. So, we're going to take a few scriptures this morning and see what God requires of us. And see the need for the church to become more practical. In the eleventh hour, than we ought to be right now. So, in Luke chapter sixteen and verses number fifteen, and Jesus said to them, "Go throughout the whole world and preach the gospel to all people." Now, here we find that Jesus is speaking to the disciples. Now, disciples are one of those that are obedient to the word and those that follow the scriptures and are able to follow instructions by Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus said this thing of instructing them to go and make disciples because these twelve were already in discipline. But Amongst the twelve, you're also going to find that there is going to be a Judas, you're going to be a Thomas, and you're going to have Peter in one street. So sometimes all twelve are not going to be online in the same level as Jesus Christ. So he sent them all to go and make disciples and preach the gospel, which means speak to them the truth. And he said, go throughout the world and preach the gospel to all people. Today we feel that only the gospel is meant for a particular group of people or a particular race of people, which is not so. Because Jesus here gave an instruction to the disciples to preach the word to all nations, to all people. And he says in verse number 16, 
Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Which means you got to repent, you got to be baptized, you got to be disciplined, you got to be discipled, and by through the word you can be saved. Amen. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now, the Bible says that also many shall say, Lord, Lord, but he shall say, Depart from me, work of iniquity, I know you not. Now, in verse number 17, it says that believers will be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons, and in my name they will be able to speak in strange tongues. Now we find that not everybody will be able to do this. It's only those that have been in the line of the word, that have repented of their sins. It doesn't really matter how you start your life, but it is where you presently spend your life with Christ. Observing everything that is in the word of God, led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, he says, they will be given the opportunity to make sure that they will be able to do extremely uh, powerful stuff. Powerful stuff that man, natural man, won't be able to do. So it's only unless you believe, you believe and you are baptized, the signs will be able to follow you. And he says that they will speak in strange tongues. Some of the tongues that will be speak, they will speak is like tongues, like an heavenly language, and then it might be also a foreign language to the people that are around you. So, in saying that, in verse number 18, it says, if they pick up snakes or drink, pick up snakes, not necessarily the, the viper itself, pick up snakes meaning those people that are ungodly as well. If you join, do not joke yourself unworthily with non-believers, and this is what happens. If you are with non-believer, uh, non-believers, they will not be able to intimidate you to do what they are doing. That's what basically it means. Or drink any poisons that like alcohol and stuff like that could be spiked in your drink. If any of these things have been given to you without your knowledge, it will not affect you because God has given you greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Now. And it says that anything that is poisonous, because alcohol is poisonous to a true believer. Alcohol and drugs is poison to a true believer. Because the Bible says that we've got to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. That's in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1. And it says you will not be armed because without your knowledge something has happened to you. It will not affect you. Amen. And they will place their hands on the sick and these people will get well. Now we're looking today in the age that we're living and the day that we're living, we're hearing about chick, uh, uh, measles and smallpox and monkeypox and all this kind of thing. You remember, beloved, we also have overcome COVID-19 through the two years from 2020 right up to the end of 2021. So, we have actually been in the process, you could say over two, two years. The devil has placed things in our way to obstruct us from serving God. But nevertheless, the Bible tells us here that God will give saints the opportunity and the power to overcome these things. But yet we do not understand. If my people that are called my mind and will not humble themselves, turn away from their wickedness, Seek my face and pray. I, God, will not look from heaven and heal the land. Now here we find that if you are not repenting of your work, you're not repenting of your past, and you're not going to move on from where Christ is taking you, you won't be able to... If you're living in your past and you say you're a Christian, you, cannot be, you won't be able to accommodate these things that God is giving to you. You won't be able to accommodate it because you are actually... He will say, ye of little faith, depart from me, ye of work of inequity. So we need to come in line with these things this morning. We need to receive the full power. We need to be empowered by the Spirit of God that comes from above. Now, let's look at it. We all want to be saved. 
What are we talking about this morning if you say you want to be saved? Once I was lost, but now I'm saved. Once I was blind, but now I see. Once I was poor, but now I'm rich. You see, in the past, all these things that you have been speaking about, blind, poor, lost, all these kind of things happened to you when you were in the past. But now that you are with Jesus, you no more encounter those things. Because the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So, we need to understand, for the kingdom of God is within you this morning. For if you are saved by grace this morning, no weapon formed against you should prosper. Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So we need to understand today, many souls are perishing because of the lack of knowledge. The Bible says, my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Why knowledge? Why in this particular time? We are basically losing our focus on the things that God wants us to do. I, we've seen many people perish. As young as a baby that is born, right after a man that is up to 100, a man, people are perishing. Even as we know, we've heard that on Friday somebody had lost his life, like a man called AKA. We all know that people are perishing, but would you live your life pleasing unto God? We can enjoy all the pleasures of this world, but lose what God has in store for us. Remember, 70 is a close age for God to, to bless you. That's a ripe old age for a person to live his life. But if you die prematurely, I don't know what to say there. I cannot tell you, but life and death lies in the power of God. And if, you're, if you die prematurely or you die when God does not call you, then it is known as prematurely. And if we die knowing that we have not made right with God and anything that God wants us to do, then we have failed in understanding the scriptures. So this morning, my condolences firstly to the to AK's family. But nevertheless, the Bible says, train your children up in the ways of the Lord. When they grow old, they will not depart from their own. But this morning I want to pay your attention, pay my attention to the word of God in Luke chapter 18. Pay attention to what I'm saying this morning. We pay for a lot of things. We pay for taxes. We pay for a lot of things. We, we pay for our food. But Jesus, most of all, paid the price of sin and removed us from shame. This morning, for those that are seated at home, and are so lexy daisy about not coming to have fellowship in the house of God. My prayer is for you this morning. If your faculties are not working, I pray that God will give you like the man that was sitting at the gate of beautiful, that he will give you the strength to get up out of your seat and walk and praise the Lord. But if you have your faculties in order and you don't want to praise the Lord, and on the day that you pass on, we have to say good things about you. It's going to be lies, absolutely lies, 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 lies. Because you have no fellowship with the saints. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, do not forsake the assembling of the saints. So I urge you this morning, I'm on my way to Canaan's land. I've been baptized, but how often do I read my Bible? How often do I believe in doing the supernatural? Am I more of a lukewarm Christian or am I more of a person that calls himself a Christian and has no attachment to Christ or am I just sailing along? So when it comes to Christmas I'm in church, when it comes to Easter I'm in church, when I have to be blessed, it's my birthday, I'll have a party or something of that nature, we will only request God's servant to be there on particular days and you have forgotten about God all the other days. My, my prayer is that God will give you a little bit of wisdom to come out of that closet, out of that mindset. Amen. Luke chapter 18 and verse number 18. Verse number 18. You know, I was just reading something and uh, somebody misquoted the scripture. 
It says it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into heaven. It was misquoted, misunderstood. But I want to tell you something. The Bible says it is so easy for a poor man to enter into heaven than a rich man to enter into heaven. Now I've got it. The reason why I'm saying this, to go through an eye of a needle, many of us look at the needle and we look at the thread and we examine it that way, but unfortunately it's not like that. The eye of a needle in the Jewish days were an opening where sheep had to go through, but a camel could not go through because the camel was so huge and the sheep were as little as we can imagine it to be. So it just says, it's easy for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. Now we need to understand where I'm taking you this morning. We need to speak about riches and salvation. Here we find in the book of Luke chapter 18 and verse number 18, we see that God is speaking to through Jesus and he teaches us something here this morning. He says a rich man, there was a Jewish leader asked Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? Firstly, Jesus says to him, now look at the way Jesus poses this question to him. He says, why do you call me good? And Jesus asked him, why do you call me good? And he turned around and said, Only God is good alone. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not commit murder, do not steal, do not accuse anyone falsely, respect your father and mother. Now these are actually laws that were laid down in Exodus 20. And in my teaching, I actually spoke to my students on Friday saying to them, why is the Old Testament there and why is the New Testament here? The New Testament is for us to follow Jesus Christ by grace. The Old Testament is for us to reflect on the behavior patterns of those that came before Jesus Christ. So it's the Old Testament which is like more historical books. And now we're living in the New Testament, which is a covenant from Jesus Christ. So in saying that, Jesus reflects to Exodus 20. And he makes reflection to that. He says, this is what he says to the rich, the Jewish leader, the rich man. He says, first of all, you know the commandments of God. Do not commit adultery. Do not commit murder. Do not steal. Do not accuse anyone falsely. Respect your father and mother. I am so, so taken with this that I have to move on quickly to verse number 21. So in saying verse number 21, the rich man, the man replied, Ever since I was young, I have obeyed all these commandments. Like I told you, these commandments were laid down under the law and it was historical. But like this man, this Jewish leader, says, I've observed all these things. I've observed all these things. But listen to what Jesus has to say. We have to pay attention as to what Jesus has to say. And then, Jesus heard this and he said to him, there is still one more thing. There is still one more thing. There's some things that we are holding back and we don't want to let go of. I urge you this morning, I hope this message will convict you. Let go of some of the things for you to enter into the presence of God. So this is what Jesus said. And he said, there is still one more thing you need to do. There's one more thing. You've done everything else. You've obeyed the commandments, like you said. But there's still something else that you're holding on to. I want you to release those things. And this is what Jesus had to say. 
There is still one more thing you need to do. Sell all you have. Wow, that's a very, very broad statement. That's a very, very, very broad statement. You might be seeing I'm smiling this morning. Sell all you have, rich. The Bible says in the book of James, rich people will want to get rich and it gathers moth. And they get it wasted and they don't want to even give it to the poor. So sometimes richness overtakes the wealth that God has to give to you. So Jesus wants him to be poor in certain areas of his life in order for him to be saved and rich in God. Now if you would be on that, you can say an amen. Because yet yeah, it's in the scripture. And he says to him, sell all you have and give the money to the poor. Now if you understand very carefully, there was a point that Jesus was in the house of Mary and Martha. And Mary brought the alabaster box and Judas said, why don't we take this alabaster box and uh, sell it and we can feed the poor. Now Jesus is not contradicting his statement, but there is something of being anointing the, the Son of God to doing in obedience. Some of us have the love of money has become the root of all evil. And obeying all the commandments and not giving up something. The Bible says also in the book of Matthew, don't worry what you eat, drink or wear, but worry about life, which is more important. Amen. So he said, sell up all and give the money to the poor. Now what did Judas say? I told you about Judas, I told you about Thomas, and I told you about amongst the discipleship. Now you all, all of us that are going to church, not all of us are on the same page. Not all of us are wanting to be in heaven. Many of us are holding back something in this earth. And these things that we are holding back in this earth are holding us back from getting into heaven. And I'm going to show you that this morning. And he says that if you believe that you are baptized, you will enter into heaven. And the signs will follow you. That's what we read in Mark 16, verses 13 to 18. But yet Jesus is also saying in the book of Luke now, Luke the physician is now taking notes of what Jesus is speaking to this rich Jew. And he says that you have to give the money to the poor, unlike what Judas was telling to Mary, take the box and sell it. See, sometimes what we need to do for God is exempt from what you do for the poor. And I want to tell you this morning, put, you know some of us need to put our money where our mouth is. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, make sure that you do it exceedingly abundantly more than you can hope or think of for the kingdom of God and for God's people thereafter. So you put God first, Matthew 6, 33 says, put God first, what we must do? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. Some of us are still living in traditions and we need to break those traditions down. Some of us are holding on to too many things of this world and we need to get rid of those things. That's what Jesus is telling this rich man. We need to come. Like Job says, naked I came into this world, naked I will go out of this world. What does God want to see of you? He wants to see Jesus in you. And that's what Jesus was trying to imply here. And he says to the man, sell everything and give it to the poor and you will have riches where? Not on earth. Not on earth, beloved. We all want to store up something. We want our own kingdoms on earth. But God says, remove yourself from all the kingdoms of the earth. And seek ye first the kingdom of God. And make sure that when you come to me and you do what I tell you to do, you'll be richer than the richest man on the face of the earth. So we hear this, and then he says this you will have riches in heaven and come and follow me. But when the man heard this, he became very sad because he was very rich. See, some of us don't want to part with some of the things that we have. Like I said earlier, we want to hold on to some of these things. And these things will keep us in bondage 
from entering into the earth. How would we know that there was a rich man and Lazarus? The Bible tells us, if anything, we need an example from the Bible. There was a rich man and Lazarus, and Lazarus sat at the table of the rich man. Every crumb that fell and fell to the dog. The dog licked his wounds, the crumbs. The rich man never thought about Lazarus. But then when they parted this world, there was a difference in destination. And sometimes, whatever we do will destine us to our destination. So you need to think very, very seriously this morning. Where am I going from here? Where am I going from here? Where am I headed to? I said to you ultimately in the beginning, let the poor say I'm rich, let the blind say I can see. So when you look at these things, how can you let the blind see? We know of Paul, who was once saw. Jesus had blinded him on his road to Damascus. And in his journey, Jesus began to minister to him. In three days, Jesus gave him something to think about. So God will change your name from unbeliever to believer. So when you have come into the presence of God, you will not be as an unbeliever, but you will be a believer. And a believer has to do exactly what God requires of him. So saying that this morning, the rich man went and he found himself in hell. And he was gasping, could have been gnashing his teeth, as the book of Revelation says. And we find that Lazarus who had souls that he was battling finds himself in heaven. What does he say? The rich man says to God, he says, Father Abraham, tell your servant to dip his finger in water, come and put it on my tongue. It's too late when you've already made the decision. Because the Bible says, the earth belongs to God and his fullness. Psalms 24. So, what have a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And here we find this man who wants to be in heaven with Jesus Christ, the rich man. But Jesus Christ gives him an instruction. You've got one more thing to do. Give up your riches. Give up your riches. Riches makes you proud. And God doesn't want a proud man in heaven. He wants a humble man. For the riches of this world will get you nowhere. But the riches of heaven will get you stable in a place of silver and gold and milk and honey that will be flourishing all the days of your life. And Jesus saw, in verse number 24, Jesus saw that the man was sad and said, How hard it is for rich people to enter into the kingdom of God. How hard? In verse number 25 it says, It is much harder for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. I just told you that earlier on. So here we are. One Jesus is speaking. You know people are always like to, uh, like to eavesdrop. So when one person is being spoken to, other people were around and see what happens. And here we find that the people who heard him asked, who then can be saved? And Jesus answered in verse number 27, what is humanly impossible is possible for God. What is impossible with man is possible with God. And then Peter said, look, we have left our home the forest. And yes, with a strong voice, I'm sure, Jesus said in verse number 25, uh, 29, Yes, Jesus said to them, And I assure you that anyone who leaves his home, or wife, or brothers, or parents, or children, for the sake of the kingdom of God, verse 30 says, will receive much more in this present age and eternal life in age to come. Now, it's a, that, 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 that's going to be a very difficult one for you to swallow this morning. Leaving your family members, and leaving people that you, you truly attach to. 
That's going to be a hard one for Christians, true Christ, uh, or Christians, not true Christians, but Christians to swallow. True Christians will accept the word as a and amen. But people that are living in shallow and just a, a, a Christian, like a wave kind of Christianity, I'll do when God, I feel it's right, I'll do this and I'll do that. But the Bible tells him, make a decision. That's why he spoke to the rich man. And that's why he spoke to the people that were listening around him. And he said, yes. And I show you that anyone who leaves home or wife or brothers and parents or children for the sake of the kingdom, what? For the sake of the kingdom, the sake of God, means Matthew 6.33 will receive much more in this present age. So if you prove your sacrifice to God in this present age, God is able to show you exceedingly abundantly more than what you can think of before. So you bring you into that place of richness when you obey. You bring you to the place of comfort when you obey. Amen. So let's go a little bit further to chapter 19 this morning. We see there's another man by the name of Zacchaeus who's a tax collector. And we read of him. In chapter 19, Jesus went into Jericho and was passing through. And there was a chief, chief, wow, chief. Chiefs get attacked first, remember that. He says there, there was a chief tax collector named Zacchaeus who was rich. chapter 18. Here we are reading about the tax collector. Look what is happening here. Now. God is trying to, to open our eyes, remove the scales of our eyes in order for us to get closer to him. Amen. He was trying to see Jesus in verse number 3 and the man could not see Jesus because he was a bit short. Then what happened to Zacchaeus? He went ahead of the crowd, climbed a sycamore tree I think a sycamore tree is not a very strong tree, by the way, to my understanding. He could only climb that tree because he was a bit of a short character. So he ran up the crowd and he climbed up the sycamore tree. And when Jesus came to the place, you see, Jesus always got something up his sleeve wherever he comes into whatever town he comes to. And he meets with a particular individual. Yeah, he met with in chapter 18, he met with the Jewish ruler. Yeah, he met with the tax collector. And just when he saw Zacchaeus, he said, what did he say? He looked up and he saw Zacchaeus and said, hurry down, Zacchaeus, because I must stay in your house. God makes, Jesus makes himself now, he puts himself in a situation. He puts Zacchaeus in a situation. Zacchaeus wasn't expecting this. All he was expecting to see is Jesus. And yet Jesus tells him, come down, I will come and stay in your house. Can you imagine somebody comes and tells you now, if a pastor comes and tells you, I'm coming to stay in your house. Ah, you suddenly hold your head. Somebody will hold your mouth. Somebody will hold your pockets. You will be so amazed and get shocked. And this is what happened. Zacchaeus had it down and welcomed him. Because he was convicted. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God convicts you. He had it down with great joy and welcomed him. And the people who saw it started grumbling. This man has gone as a guest to the home of a sinner. See, we are so quick to judge others. So quick to judge. Jesus is always looking for a sinner. And sinners are most welcome in the house of God. If you're so righteous, the Bible says, none are righteous other than God himself. All have sinned and come short of the glory. Amen. So Zacchaeus stood up and said, Lord, listen, sir. I'll give out my belong. See, conviction, what happens now to Zacchaeus? Text for him there. Went up the tree. Before he can even come, Zacchaeus is already convicted about the presence of Jesus Christ. What do you say? 
I maybe you wrote the people of the taxes. Maybe you've been robbing people in the past. It's time for you to come clean with God. It's time for you to come clean so that Jesus can come in fellowship. See, the Bible says he's a sinner, but the sinner is always convicted. And that's why he read in Mark 16, if you repent and be baptized, the signs will follow. So we go on to read here, and he says, he stood up, I'll give, all my, I'll give half of my belongings to the poor. If I have cheated anyone, I will pay back four times over. You think people are going to do it in this day and age? I've got news for you. Some people will not even part with it. Holding on to this world. I know Jim Reeves sang that song, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. You're holding on to something that is going to hold you in bondage. And it's going to convict you. It's going to trouble you. Till the day you die. You're going to become a very miserable person. And that's what Zacchaeus was trying to avoid, becoming a very miserable person. Because if Jesus came into his house and started to speak and started to reveal and started to prophesy, Zacchaeus would have been in another situation. So we find here, he said, I'll pay back four times. But Jesus said unto him, listen what Jesus said unto him. That's what we need to hear, the words of Jesus Christ. And he said to him in verse number nine, Salvation has come to this house today. Why? My presence has convicted you. I never even tell you these things. My presence has convicted you. Remember, what you do in secret will be revealed on mountaintops. So my presence has convicted. Are we affected by the presence of God? You know the Spirit is here. In the book of John, he says that Jesus says, After I'm gone, I will send. I'll tell my Father to send the Comforter who lead you unto all truth. Now in this present day, we have the Spirit of God loitering in our presence. How often do we get convicted out about our relationship with God? How often do we do that? Are we getting convicted? Or are we still trying to pull the wool over God's eye? If you're trying to, it's not a very successful thing. Because God is going to meet up with you someday. Like the rich man and Lazarus. Amen? So, salvation has come to this house today. For this man also is a descendant of Abraham. Why? Why says descendant? You know the song says, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them. You are. So you are one and you are two. How many sons? If you are father and sons of Abraham, even Abraham, listen, when he was served on the table by Melchizedek, he saw it fitting in his heart to give because Melchizedek came in the life of Jesus Christ. And if you know, you read about Melchizedek, he only appears one or two times in the Bible. But the one that typified Jesus Christ was Joseph. And the one that characterized himself as Jesus Christ was Moses. So we need to understand, we need to study into the word of God to get ourselves much more closer to him. So here let's read a little bit further. Salvation has come into the sun, which means, like Joshua says in Joshua 24, 15, I don't care what you have to do. Conviction took place in my life. As for me and my household, serve the Lord. So it says, salvation is coming to your house. So Joshua, like Joshua, your house is going to be blessed. This man, Zacchaeus, his house is going to be blessed. Like the rich ruler, he is going to be blessed. Reason being is, it could be said, but conviction takes place. You leave, you leave those things and God doesn't want you to carry on your, body, on your shoulders. He wants you to release this world. He wants you to be a, live in this world but look to heaven as your resource. Amen. So he said today, salvation has come into this house today. For this man also is a descendant of Abraham. And verse number 10, look how well it says this. The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. I never come for any other business, says Jesus Christ, but I came to redeem those that were lost. 
to bring salvation to them. When you're drowning and you're looking for a sa uh, somebody to save you, looking for a lifesaver, you find that Jesus Christ is coming your way. And when he saves you, beloved, through this conviction, through your lifestyle, never give up on the brink of a miracle because Jesus is on the throne. Never forget what he promised. He says to the man that was hanging on the cross, he says, will you forgive me today? He says, this day you will be with me in paradise. Are you hanging somewhere on the other side of Jesus Christ? And you're saying, are you the son of God? If you're the son of God, come down from there. And you know what happened to that man that always tested God? The crows came and picked his eyes and gouged his eyes. So the eyes are very important. What the eye sees, the eye wants. That's why Joshua says, as for me and my house, it's I, for me, reflecting to himself, and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come with me a little bit further. Now we're going to go into the book of Acts chapter 8. And we find here, and I was talking about God, and some of the people think this is a white God, he's a brown God. No, beloved, I want to make something known to you. He's a God of the entire world. I can prove that to you. This I will prove to you. Moses married an Ethiopian woman. And here we find that Philip is on his journey in chapter 8 and verse number 26. And this is what is being said right now. Look what happened here in verse number 26 in the book of Acts after Jesus ascended. Now we're looking under the dispensation of grace and being led by the Spirit. How often are we convicted of our lifestyle? Now here we find that in verse number 26, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Now I don't know whether you can see an angel, but the angel came to Philip, reason being he had a relationship with God. And Philip was one of the most active evangelists in the New Testament. So we find here the angel of the Lord, because of his relationship, Philip had a relationship. God and he understood the New Testament, the New Covenant. The angel of the Lord said to Philip, so which means he identified, Philip identified this was God's angel. Everybody that comes to you is not an angel of the Lord. Everybody that distracts you is not an angel. A lot of people come with prophecies as well. You're getting the false prophets of God coming along today. Give you a false prophet. You've got false evangelists, pastors and apostles and you name it. They're all around. The so-called apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers are giving fear instead of giving them wisdom to God's people. And look at the angel. How the angel comes to Philip being a disciple. And the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get ready and go south to the road direction your direction doesn't come from man should come from god amen your direction should come from god so it says go on this road depart from this road go south that goes from jerusalem to gaza this road is not used in the present day and age but in verses 27 28 you see that so philip got ready and went he was obedient because this was the angel of the lord like how the angel came and spoke to mary how the angel spoke to elizabeth the angel of the lord will appear even to you so he says now so philip got ready and he went now an ethiopian eunuch a very rich ethiopian eunuch and a eunuch is somebody that is rich in his nation. So he was a eunuch and was an important official in charge of the treasury. My word, why does this three 
passages that I've read so far in in Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 19, and now we find that the same thing appears in Acts chapter 8. This man is in charge of the treasury. And he's going to go to the treasury of the queen of Ethiopia. And he was on his way home. He had been to Jerusalem to worship God. So even Ethiopians worship this God called Jehovah. So we find he was on his way home. And he had been to Jerusalem to worship God and was going back home in his carriage. As he rode along, he was reading the book of Isaiah. The Bible tells us, even though he wasn't there to be present when Jesus was being stripped and being crucified, now he gets back into the Old Testament and he's reading. And look how it is so important for God to lead you to people that need to be saved. And so, in verse number 29, the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over to the carriage. Now, which means he was on his way and he met up with his Ethiopian. And what happened with Philip? He left his carriage and possibly ran over to the Ethiopian guy. Philip ran over to the Ethiopian guy. And then the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over to the carriage and stay close to it. Philip ran over, like I said earlier on, and heard him reading from the book, which means he was reading, uh, reading aloud. He was reading aloud. And he said, and was reading the book of Isaiah, reading the book aloud, and he asked him, do you understand what you are reading? So, God will always send you somebody to interpret scripture for you. Somebody that is selected for your understanding. You see, everybody that reads the book does not have an interpretation and a revelation. You can read a book. You can read the Bible. You can be 40 and 50 years in the church, but you never have a revelation. But sooner or later, God will send somebody to you to open your eyes, to remove those scales, for you to see the truth. So here we find that Philip was on the same journey. He had to turn around and go exactly where God was sending him, sending him to this Ethiopian unit. And this Ethiopian unit was reading. And Philip ran over, saw him reading the book of Isaiah, and he asked him, Do you understand what you're reading? See, if you go and ask somebody, you understand, they're going to get very upset in this day and age. What do you think? I'm an illiterate. They never go to school. Some of the people will tell you out loud. But let me tell you, the man that carries the mantle is anointed from God. And everybody that reads the book does not have a true revelation of what God is saying. So when the man of God is preaching to you, don't be distracted. Pay attention. Focus. Because you'll be gaining some gems to announce your life into heaven. Amen. In verse number 31, the official replied, How can I understand? Unless someone explains to me. You see? He doesn't understand. He knew of this God, Jehovah. He went to worship in Jerusalem. But then again, he was reading the book of Isaiah and he had no understanding what he was reading. But yeah, God says, Philip, that's why I say an evangelist, that is going out there. It's not just to lay hands upon the sick. He must have an understanding of the word of God. Amen. And he invited Philip to climb up and sit in the carriage with him. Verse 32. And the passage of scripture which he was reading was as follows. He was like a sheep that was taken to be slaughtered. Like a lamb that makes no sound. Makes no sound. When its wool is cut off. He did not say a word. He was humiliated and, inju and justice was denied to him. No one will be able to tell about, this, about his descendants because his life on earth has become to an end. Now Philip had to have a revelation of all the scriptures that were read, read in the book of Isaiah. Now if you read from Isaiah chapter 40 onwards, 
you'll find that some of these things apply there. And then he began to speak, starting from the passage in scripture that told the good news. In other words, the revelation that God had given Philip, he translated in a very simple way. And this is what he, he said to him. As they were traveling, they understood. And the eunuch asked him, what must I do to be saved? And Philip replied, you must be baptized of the water. And he, as he was going in his carriage, he said, there's a puddle of water, why can't I be baptized? People think baptism is not so sacred. You've got to be born of the water and of the spirit in order to see the kingdom of God. And this is the New Testament, beloved. Not something that we are reading from any other book, but from God's word. And he said, being baptized, and some manuscripts says that Philip said to him, you may be baptized if you believe in your heart. If you don't believe in your heart and you get baptized, you bring abomination upon yourself. You're taking the name of the Lord your God upon you. In verse number 38, the official ordered the carriage to stop. Both Philip and the official went down into the water. And Philip baptized him, and they went up off the water, and the Spirit of the Lord took Philip away. The official did not see him again, which means he had another journey to go. He was on a way. He was on his way to do something else for the Lord. Beloved, what does it take for you to understand that you should humble yourself before the Lord? Don't attach yourself to this world. Make God the center of your life. If you live for God today and you give your life to Jesus Christ, removing all pleasures and all hoarding of things of this world, God is able to work with you. Other than that, He's unable to work with you because you have already focused yourself. You've put your eye on something else. The songwriter says, turn your eyes upon Jesus and look for his wonderful face. And all of these things will go strangely there in the light of his glory and grace. If you know that you have to give up something and you're holding on to something, I'm sure the Ethiopian eunuch that was in charge of the treasury of the queen was also convicted to a certain extent because I'm sure baptism made him feel comforted in the presence of God. Are you dealing with something today and is something holding you back today? Confess your sins to God. Let Him see you through. Get somebody that acknowledges the Word of God. Join a Bible-based church that will be able to guide you through. Don't join people that are it easy, that are pulling back. Join people that are ever ready to serve God. See Philip got a word from the Lord and what happened? The angel of the Lord told him, turn and move this way. You've already got something, you've got an assignment. Each one of you as Christians have an assignment on the face of the earth. I'm sure that Nicodemus, Zacchaeus, the rich Jew had something God had something in line for them to accomplish on the face of the earth. If you're blessed this morning, stand with me. Can we stand this morning? What is holding your back? What is bothering you this morning? Has the message brought conviction to you? If this is God's word and it brought conviction to you, Peter and John were going into the temple. I spoke about this message last week. What they gave that man that sat at the, gate, at the temple was more precious than silver and gold. So raise your hands this morning as we pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word and for the revelation of your word this morning. We pray, Lord, through this word, many will come to know the saving love of God and the blessing of God which adds no sorrow but gives 
richness to people. So I pray God that in our sorrows we will receive the blessings of God. When we let go of this world and we seek your face, O oh God, that we will be able to see what you desire of us. So I pray this morning that you bless us, bless the viewers, bless everybody this morning and take your rightful place as the God of the Bible in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Amen.